Monday Letters, Anita Hill Revisited, Message in Coco Politician's Memory Regarding commentary, with Coco, we are no longer invisible, page D1, Friday, overall, Monica Rohr did a fine job of reviewing this animated film, convincing me that the movie is one to see. I disagree though with her statement alleging that, the success, of Coco, is all the more remarkable because of the current political climate, in which Latinos are often cast as undesirables. Had she confined her criticism to how Latinos are often cast in movies, I would likely have agreed with her. Given, however, that she expressed her opinion from the perspective of the current political climate, I disagree. I believe Americans in general value and welcome the many contributions all those of Hispanic and other heritages have made to American society. Translator. To read this article in one of Houston's most spoken languages, click on the button below. Letters. Anita Hill testifies during the confirmation hearing for Justice Clarence Thomas on Capitol Hill in Washington, October. HBO will be airing a feature film titled A Confirmation About the Hill and Thomas Supreme Court Hearings in 1991, where she accused Thomas of sexual harassment, threatening his ascent to the Supreme Court. Paul Hosfros, The New York Times, Monday Letters, Anita Hill Revisited, Message in Coco Parker. The ignominious martyrdom of Al Frank and Morris, reform the tax code to help small businesses in Texas Attic Stam is shown on the Harris County Flood Control District map. The Jesus, Houston Chronicle, one key issue Brooks. To claim they are viewed as undesirable unjustly casts as Persians which ignore the truth of the immigration debate currently dividing our country. The real issue is that of a woefully outdated, overworked, understaffed and underfunded immigration system, resulting in millions of individuals of many different ethnic origins being in this country illegally. Those on the left seem to enjoy casting conservative Americans as cold and heartless. The reality is the great majority of those on the right recognize this country was built by immigrants and it has always been viewed as a welcoming land. We believe it still is today, but a country without borders, a country that ignores its own policies, regulations and laws rather than change them will never be respected or united. Regarding politicians' selective memory is bipartisan, page A15, Thursday, Joni Goldberg uses the standard bad conservative analogy when he writes, Conservatives believe that the people themselves are better at spending their money than the government is. Pothole on his street? Or kept his neighborhood school open? Or provided the public library, the police? the EMTs or even the garbage trucks that regularly rumble in for his trash? Government began when our distant ancestors came together to build a wall or dig a well that would benefit everyone but which no one could do alone. And government continues because it's necessary. Its absence isn't utopia, it's anarchy and chaos. As society becomes more complex, government needs to expand. Who knew about internet crime 30 years ago? Anyone who says we should return to smaller, less obtrusive government is either deluded or deceptive. Nancy Perk Daily, Houston. Regarding growing list of Republicans aiming to oust Farenthold in 2018, Kern.com, Friday. This story reminded me of Anita Hill, who made a historic appearance at the confirmation hearing for U.S. Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas in 1991. At the time, 
Hill alleged that Thomas had sexually harassed her when she worked for him at the Department of Education and the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. I bet she is wondering where that list of Republicans disappeared to when she stood practically alone in speaking truth to power.